Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm the Rambling Film Lover and on this episode I actually want to touch upon a topic that is important to me as a film fan. Nowadays the trend has been popping up again for remakes, in this case reboots specifically of TV shows, but the remake reboot trend has always been around, honestly since God, the 40s, even earlier. Um, you may not know it, but the A Star is Born film is actually a kind of constant remake. But theirs, even though they keep the same title, has always had a somewhat different little touch here and there. Like, they've adapted it for the time period, so to speak. It is, a, or it has always been, a young singer, usually female, who is spotted by either in agent or in the case of the most recent one a already big star actually that was also the case for the one with Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson she's a young singer and he's an already established singer who finds her pretty much falls in love with her and then encourages her supports her and helps her become a huge star while dealing with their own demons um, but this this has been this film has been around I think the 30s was the first one, but I digress. In this episode, I actually wanted to talk about when it's just done too much or maybe too literal without really kind of attempting to still make it its own story. The example I want to use primarily is the Point Break remake. Now, Point Break starring Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. It's a fantastic film. It's a fun film. Action-packed, but it's also kind of a bromance. Like, it's it's very intense, and just like in the film Hot Fuzz, it's like something that needs to be shared with other people. By the power of Grayskull. Point Break or Bad Boys 2? Which one do you think I'll prefer? No, I mean, which one do you want to watch first? And I just thought it was great. It's it's product of the 90s, but it's done really, really well. It's fun. And then when I had heard that they were going to make the remake, my first thought was, well, my first reaction was just, uh, why? And then my second reaction was, we already did that. The Fast and the Furious. What is The Fast and the Furious about? Well, it's very similar to Point Break. Both of them have a young LAPD detective who's tasked with ingratiating himself and meshing himself with a certain group in order to get close to a suspect. In Point Break, they're not sure who the suspect is because the bank robbers um, wear masks of the first of American president, excuse me. Uh, in point in in the Fast and the Furious, Paul's character Brian gets in on a street race so he can get in the same circle and try to find also who the suspect may be involved in the hijackings. But it's very similar in that both films, the detective becomes friends, almost family with the suspect, and they're very shocked to find out who it is and then they have to deal with this this inner conflict what to do do i let them go do i save them do i get them etc it's and it's very beautiful it's very poetic how both are are very similar both involve you know falling in love with either family of the suspect or falling in love with someone who had also been in a relationship you know in the case of point break but we didn't need a literal Point Break remake. First of all, it's, it's an awful film. And second, what The Fast and the Furious did that was so great is that it was made for the time period. Street racing was huge, and so it was the perfect world. It was a perfect setup for a young detective to get into. In the 90s, around the time of Point Break, surfing was the thing. That's why it was the perfect... Um, it was the perfect kind of like theme for them to follow. I don't like literal remakes or remakes that don't have a reimagination because if you're going to try to do a literal remake, then 
you're taking away the chance for people to go back to the original film and watch it. I don't want people to forget, you know, original films. I would love people to go back and see these great performances, especially from actors such as the late, great Patrick Swayze. No offense to the actors who took the role in the in the remake, but it didn't need to be done. If you're going to do something, reimagine it, change it. This reminds me of when I believe Gus Van Sant did, it's like a sh it is a shot for shot remake of Psycho. Again, it had very good actors in the film, but why did you have to do that? Just listen, if you're going to watch Psycho, you might as well watch the one, the original by Alfred Hitchcock. This, the, the, the remake was just, it was still ridiculous. It was ridiculous to me when it came out and it's still ridiculous now. If you're going to try, if you're so inspired and such a fan of something and you want to be a filmmaker, you want to be a writer, etc., you, you have it in you to make something inspired by it. Don't try to make something little because, I, like I say with sequels, you're losing the magic. You really are. Plus, like I always gripe about, there are so many writers out there trying to make it who have probably insanely good ideas why do we have to keep going to the remake route or the reboot i know we're trying to capture the magic of that time but i don't think it was just that film or that show i think it was because we have nostalgia goggles on and that time period was really great for some people like for me yeah i grew up in the 90s in the 2000s and it wasn't like a perfect time but those films remind me of those better days. But we can still do that now. We can still create something good now without having to go back, rehash something or dig something up or try to try to make it like before. Right now isn't like the 90s. It's, it's a different time period. And we've got such great ideas and we've got great actors out there. Let's showcase them. If anyone ever asks me, you know, would I ever want to see something remade? Sometimes. I'm, I'm not always a staunch no. There are some things that I think could be remade. But I do think you should change it a little bit out of respect for, for like the first film. But I'm always someone who wants people to go back to older stuff. Like if you're going to be a filmmaker, a writer, an actor, you don't have to be a fan of golden era Hollywood or you know anything from the decades following but I do think you should watch them you should know them just to learn where it came from because then maybe you will fall in love with stuff from that time and then you will develop an appreciation for it when it comes to foreign film adaptations I'm I'm kind of on the fence about them like for instance uh, Gore Verbinski's remake of The Ring is fantastic i it's one of my favorite films in the early to mid 2000s you guys may have remembered the asian horror film trend that took over at least over here in the west um remakes of a lot of really great films such as the ring and i think it was mulholland drive was Naomi Watts's breakout film, but I do think The Ring kind of solidified her a little more because I remember her far more from that one. That one is was more of a like a blockbuster film as well. Mulholland Drive, excellent film. I think it kind of could be considered a little bit sleeper hit maybe. But yeah, when I saw The Ring, I loved it. And then I saw Ringu and then The Grudge had been made. They, The Grudge remake with Sarah Michelle Gellar is a little more interesting because they actually brought like the, it's like America goes to Japan so they had a lot of American actors but it took place in Japan so I think they were trying to change it up that way although again I would have preferred maybe a, re a reimagining but it's it's not even a criticism of that the grudge did very well um, it seemed like maybe fish out of water type idea but it still was I think true somewhat to the original um some of you may know the film audition if not that one is a very 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 disturbing film it's 
I remember that one really was very haunting. Like I think I had a few nightmares after that one. It's it's a strong film. Uh, it's a horror film. And I don't, I'm not surprised, I guess, we didn't remake it in the States, but I had always wondered, was it maybe too strong? But I remember the trend of all the other ones being remade. So it's hard for me to say if, if maybe we should have just kept Ringu. Although right now I'm seeing a lot of reactors actually reacting to both, so that's great. If I would love for them to keep that up, like if you're reacting to a film that followed like a trend, please go back and find, you know, the original one and react to that one too, because the originals, they're the ones that like struck that, caught that lightning first. Um, another interesting example that uh, it kind of drew my criticism was when I saw The Departed, it's a fantastic film, perfect, one of my favorites, uh, a great cast, great story. And then when I looked it up, um, I like looking up trivia, like any fan does, you go on IMDb or whatnot. I had found out that it was a remake of a 2002 Hong Kong action thriller film called Infernal Affairs. And then when I saw that film, oh, my first reaction was just, oh, why couldn't they have promoted this in the States? This would have been perfect. This is a really great film. Like, clearly it was adapted and they they even kept some of the scenes from the original 2002 film. They put it in The Departed because it's, it's, you know the scenes, it's one of the more important ones in there. And I just thought, this is so good. I wish they had promoted it more in the States because I would love more attention to be brought to, you know, certain actors or certain certain work like this. But Martin Scorsese's The Departed is a stellar film. It's fantastic. And there have been a lot of films like that where it's maybe a, a, a remake, almost a reimagining and not quite. It's still very true to the original. Maybe change a few things here, but they'll always keep like those same scenes and whatnot because it's the one that everyone remembers. But yeah, The Departed is always hard for me to say because the Scorsese version is perfect. But I do wish a lot of people would see Infernal Affairs because it's also very, very stellar. And speaking of remakes, French actor Jean Renault has had two films remade. Um, he played the cleaner in the very successful, very awesome film La Femme Nikita, who comes in to help the main character clean up a mess while she's trying to finish the last job, while she's trying to escape this life of a hired assassin. La Femme Nikita was remade in 1993, starring um, Bridget Fonda, with Harvey Keitel taking on Jean Renault's part. And it was a good film, but some of you guys may know that it was remade into a very successful series. I used to see it on the USA Network. And um, I love Peter Wilson. It was a really a great show. And I kind of liked that they did that. And every now and then I'll hem and haw about like, you can't bring a movie into a series. It's not going to capture the magic. Well, that's not always the case. Sometimes sometimes a show or sometimes a story is better as a series or like a limited series because there's a lot. There's so much. There's so many great characters. You got to kind of cover it more than two hours. But I digress. The other example is Jean Renault's hit film, um, The Visitors. It's an original French film. I think it's to this day one of the still highest grossing films ever made. It's a really great story. Uh, a night uh, in France. <laughs> Time travels to the future to his next his like descendant and just that whole fish out of water premise it's really great it's funny and um that one i believe was made in 93 i'm not sorry it was made in the 90s and in 2001 i didn't even realize this until i caught it one day just out of the blue we remade it here in the states with uh, i believe christina applegate and jean renault we brought him back because it's still the same it's a french night coming to the future or to, excuse me to present day and um, stays with his descendant, but it just it just does not capture the magic as wonderful as Jean Renault is. It just yeah, it fell flat, and it, it wasn't successful in the states, and it wasn't successful in France. So it was a very nice attempt, you know. Jean Renault's wonderful, 
But not everything's going to be saved by that, that one piece that you brought from the original. The only other example I can think of is when they're paying homage to an original. So they'll, they'll have that character, excuse me, they'll have the actor come in in a cameo. For instance, Django Unchained, the scene where after that uh, brutal fight for entertainment, for uh, the scene where we're introduced to Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Jamie Foxx's character goes over, I guess, to the bar, and then the older Italian gentleman, they, they introduce each other, and the gentleman asks Jamie, you know, what's your name? And Jamie Foxx says his name, and then he says, you know, the D is silent. And the Italian man says, I know, it's because that man is uh, played by Franco Nero, whose breakout film was the film Django. Another great example of a reimagining that you may not have noticed is Jordan Peele's Get Out. He actually said he was he was inspired by the Sefford Wives. No, not the one from 2004, the original from I believe 1975, which is an adaptation of a book. That film is excellent. It stars Catherine Ross and it's it's suspenseful and it's a very suspenseful film. It it's slow, like everyone likes to tell me. Oh, it's a very slow movie. But just just give it a watch. It's a good one. Sometimes you need a slow burn. But it is an original with a very shocking ending. And when I found that out, when I found out Jordan Peele had been inspired by it, I thought back, yes, I can see it there now. That's why I like the reimagining. Maybe you could tell that it was inspired by something because it's it's throws homage to the audience a little bit but other times it's so he he created his own thing from that inspiration and he made something very original something oscar worthy because he won an oscar for best original screenplay but that's how you do it at least in my opinion because look take example uh a re the remake from 2004 it was atrocious i don't think the writers even knew what they were doing it was like robots, but then it's aliens, and then the villain is a woman. Like, it's just completely rehashed it into something, changed the whole point of it, changed what even the, the original writer was doing. Like, it was just a huge mess. It was garbage. What a waste of incredibly talented people. But Get Out is, is perfect. That is a perfect example of a reimagining. It's taking something from before and bringing it to something for today's audience, for this current time period, etc., you know, what have you. If you do something like that, that's like honestly, truly paying homage. And then you're bringing something to the audiences. And then when you mention something like this, I would think that audience members would go, hey, you know what, I want to go back and I want to watch the film he was talking about being inspired by, and or I want to read the original book that the first film adapted into a film, etc., etc. Brian De Palma liked to reimagine, but kind of with a heavy hand, Hitchcock classics, because I can think of two right now. Dress to Kill, for me, is his reimagining of Psycho, but with his touch to it. And I would say that Body Double is his reimagining of Rear Window. Now, you can tell that it's it's heavily inspired by Hitchcock, but it is still very much a Brian De Palma film. Both of them are. But that's another example of just taking something and just putting your spin to it, changing it a bit maybe for the times. And while I'm on the topic of Alfred Hitchcock, um, what Brian De Palma does that I wish others would do when they're thinking of paying homage to something or clearly trying to make a film that's heavily inspired by something is something original. I mean, is change the name. I will say this. I prefer in terms of reimaginings. I prefer Disturbia starring Shia LaBeouf. That is rear window for like present day or well, was it 2007 present day? I thought it was exceptionally well done. Like I said, they brought it to the present day. It's a younger cast, um, but it's just as thrilling and it has that same feeling, the same effect. They just, it's marvelous. It's perfect. It's excellent. 
more recently, I know that, what is it, The Lady in the Window? The Woman in the Window with Amy Adams? That one is clearly a, sm a more blatant attempt at, at Rear Window, and it just fell so flat. I don't know really what to say about that one. I'll probably give it another rewatch so I can give a, a criticism, but what Disturbia did, Lady in the Window could not. But again, that was an adaptation of a book, so maybe I'll go back and read the book and, and see maybe they weren't loyal to it or maybe the book was also more of a, a inspir inspired by Rear Window. Who knows? But as I was saying earlier, before I went off on a tangent, I would respect the filmmaker more, the studio more, if they would change the name because that's a true test of how good your new story is. As heavily inspired as you can be by an original work, if you can create something with a new name, with something made more for today or whatnot, with those changes, so it's not literal, you know, shot for shot remake. If you can do that with the new name without borrowing that clout of the original name, then you've made a hit and you know, and, and you're an excellent filmmaker. I'll say that. Like Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone came out in the 60s. It's an incredible piece of work by Rod Serling. It is fantastic. I believe it had been rebooted in the 90s as well to the 2000s, but the reason why I'm not too familiar with that reboot is because I actually am a huge fan of the Outer Limits reboot, because Outer Limits, I believe also, it was a competitor to Twilight Zone, and it had come out in the 60s, but the span from the 90s, I believe, to the early 2000s, it's my favorite. It's exceptional it's so good if you guys can catch all the seasons please do so because it's some of the best writing i've ever heard but again i digress for today i know that they had rebooted the twilight zone it was jordan peele i believe for cvs and i had seen one or two episodes but it just like i always say it didn't have that same magic as the original but you know what is to me what I consider the Twilight Zone of today, Black Mirror. I th think about it. I mean, sure, Black Mirror doesn't have that awesome narration, that introduction, and a Rod Serling in a suit, cigarette in hand, but everything else still kind of has the same feeling. These are stories that have to do with today. These are science fiction-themed episodes that reflect society and you know what's going on with technology at a person's moral compass other sort of social situations etc these these puzzles and other topics that you know we keep talking about them and that's how it was when twilight zone had come out i'm pretty sure if you guys have seen it you have one or two episodes in your head that you remember you know, even to this day, and that that's how great that show was, that they hold up even to this day. Maybe some stuff with uh, technology may be different, but where that maybe doesn't hold up, Black Mirror is, has taken that, I would say it's, it's taken the torch, and it's now for this generation. And again, different name. Don't remake something using the same name, trying to use that same clout and that same reputation. Use a different name. And we will see the inspiration for ourselves. I'm such a huge fan of films, and I always will be, and we're all entitled to our criticisms about them, but I do hope to see more, either more reimaginings or more original work come out. I, I feel like we're all itching for something like that. It'd be a, an awful waste of talent to go back and just try to copy paste copy and paste very poorly and lose the magic remember filmmaking is is all magic thanks so much for watching my episode and i'll see you guys on the next one bye